Guitar practice session 102524. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on, then give you a recap so you get an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap, hoping the practice sessions generate a routine, help me verbalize the things that I'm trying to learn to get them in my mind better, possibly provide information to others, learning similar things, possibly also po providing for feedback if anybody sees a better way to do the things that I'm doing here. I do think that presenting the information is useful because it helps to verbalize things in ways we otherwise would not. So if you want to take these resources and make your own instructional videos, even if no one is listening to them, might be a useful exercise. We'll try to provide you with the worksheets. Don't worry about plagiarism or anything like that. You can do what you want uh, with them. They will be structured, however, from the perspective of us from behind the guitar so I don't get all turned around as if I pressed my guitar on the screen. I have my strings then top to bottom, left to right from the perspective of me from the behind the guitar. I'll flip my guitar around so it looks like I'm left-handed. So once again, you can line up what I'm doing to the fretboard on the screen to you from the perspective of playing the guitar. So hopefully we can just focus in on maneuvering around the positions on the guitar instead of flipping the guitar around in our mind. And this time I'm going to be looking at the Lydian and I spend a good deal of time kind of going over the recap as to why uh, this is going to be a useful thing to do because I think, of course, the modes are scary for people. And uh, I think there's different ways that you can kind of look at, at the different modes and why it would be uh, useful. But the main thing I kind of focus in on that is the takeaway is that from a practical standpoint, if I go over to my related scales worksheet, I want to be able to look at the major scale and the related modes. Uh, I want to be able to look at the major scale up here and the related modes like the Dorian and Phrygian and so on and be able to play in all of them while still being able to construct chords from every note that is in each of the different uh, scales so that I'm not locked into just playing the major scale because that's the only one that I know how to make chords from, right? So how do I do that? I use the major scale as a reference tool and then I use an absolute numbering system based on the major scales, which means this is the relative positions one through seven. And that's what I'm gonna to use to name the, the modes. Most people I think actually start to do that anyways because we start to say, okay, well, if I'm in the Dorian and I'm playing the fifth of the Dorian, that actually is the same as like the, the sixth of the major and therefore I'm going to make a minor chord from it because I know that the sixth of the major is one I make a minor chord from because the two, three, and six are ones that we make a minor chord from. Notice what we're doing when we do that. We're basically saying the relative position on the Dorian is the fifth, but I want to look at the relative position as compared to the major because I have memorized for my chord constructions that I make a major chord on the one, four, five, and a minor on the two, three, and six. So all we have to do is extend that concept out to say, hey, look, this numbering system that I'm using, which is the major relative position numbering system, is what I'm going to use to just name the modes. So I'm going to call mode number six, which is the minor scale, mode number six, right? Now, a lot, some people might not agree with that because they're going to say, well, it depends. If you're, in the, if you're in the Dorian, it's going to be mode number five. But no, I'm giving an absolute mode numbering system based on the major key. Why? Because that allows me to, to orientate myself and say that's the relative position compared to the major key, which helps me to, to orientate myself on, on what mode I'm in and therefore what kind of chords I'm going to be constructing from it. And so once I do that, then I get into the 7, 9, 11, and 13, which is a little bit more confusing than just a triad. And they don't follow the same structure of being exactly the same for the majors and the minors. That's why we have to first learn the, the major chords, basically, and then compare the other modes to it, determining which of the intervals will be distinct. So if I know the one, the major intervals, then all I have to do is think about the four and the five, which 
four into five mode is what I would call it, which is the Lydian mode and the Mixolydian mode, and look at the intervals which are distinct or different, which for the Mixolydian is the seven, for the Lydian is the 11, and we're working here on uh, the 11. Once we understand that, then we can jump over to the Lydian and kind of think of it as, as though we're playing the four, or we can think of ourselves as playing in Lydian itself, but we're really only focusing on what is now the one of the Lydian to see the chord construction, which has that distinctive interval of the 11th, which is a, an augmented 11th, which is equivalent to the four, which we'll talk about when we get into it, which is basically an augmented fourth. The worksheet has it named a little bit incorrectly because of the way the worksheet is. We'll get into that uh, as well here. And then we'll look at each position on the guitar, the goal being to say, if I have any root note on the guitar, then uh, I'd like to be able to find the related 11 or augmented 11. And then I'll think about chord construction where I'd like to have my triad and then grab that 11. And if I can't get the triad and the 11, I drop the five. If I can't get the triad uh, and the 11, with, 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 uh, then I drop the three and I pick up the one, five, 11. That's the basic system that we get into with this one. After we're done with this one, we will have done all of the majors, meaning we will have looked at all of the intervals related to the one of a, of a major key related to the Ionian mode. And then we look at the two where we have chord constructions that have a major chord, the four and the five, otherwise known as the Lydian and Mixolydian mode. And we look at the distinctive interval within them. Next, what we'll do after we do that again, probably tomorrow we'll finish the Lydian off. We'll go to the Aeolian, which is the minor mode. So then we want to compare the minor mode to the major mode and look at the distinctive intervals, which are going to be all of the all of the ones that are not perfect except for uh, you know the two stays the same. So it would be the the three, you know the three, the four, and then uh, the the six and the seven intervals will be different because they're going to convert from major to minor. Once we understand those intervals, then we compare the the minor chord creations or the two and the three, the minor modes, and look at the distinctive interval, which again, there's only gonna be one distinctive interval in each of them as compared to the minor mode. That's what we'll do hopefully going forward if I don't, if I can keep going. This time we're looking at the Lydian mode, which is a major mode focusing in on the distinctive interval between the Lydian mode and the major scale, otherwise known as the Ionian mode, that distinctive interval being the 11th, if we're naming those intervals as they're typically named when constructing a chord, that 11th in essence is equivalent to the fourth of the Lydian mode. If we're just looking at the relative position from a scale degree, we'll get back to that shortly. But before we do that, let's first give an overview of the overall project and try to reiterate in my mind and in our mind how this might be useful in the overarching framework of basically playing music from a practical standpoint. So to do that, I'm gonna go over to the Related Modes tab, where I have everything mapped out in the key of C, and then the Related Modes, the Dorian, the Phrygian, the Lydian, that are related to uh, the key of C, Ionian, or the major scale. Our project then is to basically try to use the major scale as our Rosetta Stone, our point of reference that we're going to then measure everything else against. And therefore, we need to first memorize basically everything on the major scale, meaning the major scale has seven relative positions out of the 12 notes. The notes that we're looking at aren't as important as the concept of the relative positions, but here we're looking at the key of C, which has no uh, sharps and flats within it. And then from a practical standpoint, we want to build chords. So I'd like to say on each of these relative positions, do I make a major chord or minor chord? Typically, we first learn that the one, four, five will be major, the two, three, and six minor, the seventh will be diminished. What does that mean? It means that we're going to have a, a three note chord creation. Uh, when we think about just chords in general, they all have the same relative first and fifth relative to the first and fifth note within the chord. The distinction is the third the third for a major chord being a four note away major third for a minor chord being a three note away 
uh, minor third. So that's so next we want to go in into the 7, 9, 11, and 13 and think about those intervals which get a little bit more confusing. But before I look at that, we also want to be able to play not just in the major key. We would like to be able to play in Dorian, in Phrygian, in Lydian, and of course the, the main other mode being the minor key, the uh, Aeolian mode. But you can see if I look at the related Aeolian, these are the same notes. It's basically C major, but now starting from the A note, which is an A minor scale, the related uh, minor scale. You can see the related major here. There's the C, uh, which is the Ionian mode. If I go to any other scale, what I would like to be able to do is to still know when am I going to construct a major chord and a minor chord. One way to do that is to use the major key as the Rosetta Stone and say, okay, I'm going to name the relative positions here, which are now reordered one through seven in compared to the minor, but look at and be able to figure out what the relative position is with regards to the major, which I can apply a little bit of a math formula to do that. For example, if I say I'm looking at the fourth of the minor, what is, what is going to be the related major? Well, if, if I go up to, to the major and I'm saying I'm on the sixth because I'm in the Aeolian, I need to know that the Aeolian or major mode is the sixth. And that's why it's useful for me to name the, the actual modes with absolute mode numbers based on the Rosetta Stone of the major key. Say I'm on the sixth mode. And, uh, and then how far away is that from the first? Well, if I was on the first, it's actually five steps away. One, two, three, four, five, right? So I could say, well, then six minus one will give me the number of steps to go from one to six. And then, and then if I go back down here, I say, if I'm looking at the, the what would what, I say, the fourth, I'd say six minus one plus uh, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's only seven modes. So I can say <clears throat> 10 minus, uh, 10 minus, what did I do here? It should be six minus one is five plus four, five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine. There's only seven modes. So I can, cause it goes around in a circle. So I could say nine minus seven uh, is two. And that gets me to the Dorian mode. So notice what I did there. And I said it's the Dorian mode, but I could just say, well, it's the two of the major key. If it's the two of the major key, I know I'm going to make at least a minor triad because the two, three, and six related to the major key are the ones that I make a minor triad uh, for. But I can go beyond that and say that if I know that these related numbers up top here, if I know that these uh, related numbers are modal numbers, then I can also just use that numbering system as the main numbering system for the modes. And so, so the modes are going to, are going to tell me what chords I can make beyond just the one, three, and five, the seven, nine, 11, and 13. So the two ways that we could go about that is I could say, well, if I'm in the key of C and I want to play all the major chords from it, the one, uh, four, five, I could go to the one of the C major and then shift my whole worksheet to then play the one as if I went to the one, a whole nother scale for the F major. That would be playing like complement, and that will still sound cool because everything will be parallel. But if I want to stay in the same key, then I'm going to say when I play the four, even though if I just play three notes, it would be the same thing as if I jumped over and went to an F major scale because the one, the, the one, three, five would be the same. It's, it's actually, I'm playing in the Lydian mode, which becomes apparent when I get to the 7, 9, 11, and 13, which could have distinct intervals from the major. That's why it's important. Now, we talked about, I looked at in the prior few days, probably the most important component, which is the fifth, because when I play the fifth, that's basically the Mixolydian mode. And the Mixolydian mode has a distinctive seventh, and that seventh becomes very important because at least it's, it's the most important thing, most likely beyond the one, three, five, to know that that seventh is distinctive from 
the major seventh, right? So that's going to give us our diminished seven, our leading tone, gives us our bluesy kind of sound uh, if you played all sevens, uh, for example. Uh, so now we're going to go to the other one, and that's going to be uh, the Lydian. So then what's the approach for and and so notice what i'd like to be able to do is be able to keep the same numbering system here so that when i go to the dorian for example and then and then i'm i'm trying to find the third of the dorian i'd like to be able to say well the third of the dorian is the fourth of the related major which is the lydian right it's the lydian that will tell me what chords will fit in in it even though i'm in the dorian right so i'm going to use my rosetta stone of the c major to look at the relative position to give an absolute numbering system to the modes which tell me what intervals i can use that will actually still be in the same key that's the idea okay so how can we do that well the first thing we do is we learn the intervals for the major key so I can learn these uh, intervals, and then I, I could, and then I could learn the intervals to the minor. We'll go to the minors later. Uh, but but then if I'm looking at just the majors, I know that the one, four, five are going to be the major uh, intervals, right? Those are all the the major ones, and they're all going to have a same relative uh, one one uh, one three five chord construction, right? So they're gonna have the, the same major third in it, in other words. But then when we get to, to the seven, the question is which, which of these intervals will be different? And we saw that in the Mixolydian before, it's the seven that's different. So what we learn is we learn all of the intervals, the seven, the nine, the 11, and 13, as it relates to the first of the major scale. And then I'm gonna look for the distinctive ones which are different. So the ones that are different is the is the, uh, the 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 fifth has a distinctive seventh, and then the fourth, which is the Lydian, which is what we're working on now, has a distinctive eleven here. Now the other thing that gets a little bit confusing is we have two different kind of uh, numbering systems for the nine, eleven, and thirteen out here. You'll note that this, like this Lydian, is just a scale form. If I unhide these cells, doo -doo -doo, unhide, I have a scale of the Lydian scale, which is one, two, three, four. These are relative positions to the F here. So, so that's going to be that. Look what happened here? Uh, this should be on the seven. Relative positions to the F. But when I name my chords, what we do is we skip every other note. So we do the one, the three, the five the seven but there's only seven notes so what do i do from there well really you go around in a circle back to the two if you don't think about octaves but if you think about octaves then i go to the nine the 11 and the 13. so that means for our purposes on the guitar because i'm not so focused on different octaves because i'm limited to what i can play so whenever i think about the 9, 11, and 13, it's in essence equivalent for all intensive purposes. Intense purposes, I don't even know how to say that. I always say intensive purposes, but I don't even know what that means. For all intensive, pur for all intents and purposes, I don't know. It's equi the 9 is equivalent to the 2, and the 11 is equivalent to uh, the, the 4, and the 13 is equivalent to the 6. That's why I hide these ones, the 2 hide, and the four hide, and then, uh, wait, hide, and then the six I hide, hide, so that we just have uh, these in, in the format of skipping every note as we would for chord constructions, and then these are our intervals, but they only relate to the one chord, right? Uh, okay, so that's gonna be the idea. So now we're gonna be, so now I'm looking at the Lyd Lydian, so we already looked at the 11, which is equivalent to the, to the four interval from the perspective of, of a major key, which has a five note away perfect fourth. That five note away perfect fourth works for, and I'm just gonna look at the majors, it works for the Ionian and it looks for, works for the Mixolydian, but it'll have a different shape. So I'm gonna learn the normal shape that would be on the one and then I'm gonna figure out which shape is different, which will be on the four, 
with regards to the mixolydian. The shortcut on these, by the way, if I say if I'm looking at the major chords, the one four five, then I, th we already talked about the the one three five are going to be the same. What's going to be different? The seven will be different on the uh, mixolydian on the five. The nine is good all the way down. So. On, on all of the major chords, I'm not talking about the minor chords, I'm just talking about the one, four, five, the nine is good. The 11, which is equivalent to the four, is the one where we have the four is gonna have the distinctive interval, which will be different. So we need a different shape on it than on the one and the five. And then the 13, again, is good. So the 13, which is equivalent to the six, it's a, it's a major, nine well it's equivalent to six nine note away major six it's the same all the way down so when i look at these the seven nine eleven and thirteen the ones i need to be careful of are the seven and the eleven because those are the ones that are not the same through the three major chords the one four five okay that's the story so now we're going to go to the eleven here going back on over to my Lydian. So now we just put the Lydian, the, the Lydian as the one, and I've created a worksheet that just has Lydian mapped out so that I can then pick a note somewhere in the middle of the guitar. Our goal is to say, if I say that any note on the guitar is my root, I would like to be able to find all related intervals that would be the 11th uh, from it, which is gonna be uh, the fourth of the Lydian which, and this is wrong here because, because this says it's a, it should be an augmented, uh, an, an augmented fourth rather than a diminished fifth. So don't let that throw you off because it's actually the same interval, but my worksheet is because of the formula pulling in this one. So I'd have to make a much more complex formula to have my worksheet pull out correctly but it's still six notes away. It's just gonna be, uh, it shouldn't be a fifth. It should be an, an augmented fourth because we need the fourth here. So that's gonna be the idea. So if I look at the intervals, then what do I have on the intervals for Lydian? You've got a perfect first, that's the same as the major. Two note away, major second, same. Four note away, major third. And then here's the one where I should have a fourth because it should be reflecting this four, not this five. That's why it should be an augmented fourth instead of a diminished fifth, but it would still be six notes away, augmented fourth. And then we have a seven note away, perfect fifth. We have a nine note away, major six. We have an 11 note away, uh, major seven, right? And so, that, so this is the distinctive interval, the only one that's gonna be different when we're playing this mode, which is, which is equivalent to playing you know, the fourth of the related major scale so when I'm building a chord based on the fourth of the major scale, which is equivalent to this mode, then I just need to be careful of this fourth. Or you can also think of it as this fourth is the one that we can emphasize that I couldn't emphasize elsewhere, which is gonna give you a sound that other people probably aren't doing much, but because, because they're playing the safe triad, right? And so you can kind of have a little bit more leeway to play something that still would be in the same key that might be doing something a little bit different if you learn these these is the idea okay so there's that okay and then so i have the 11 here which is equivalent to the four i'm going to pick a note and then when i pick a note like if i pick this a then there's only going to be one note on each string within a 12 note frame that will be that interval. So then I'm gonna look at every interval related to it and on a systematic way so I can get the shape for each string. And then uh, I'm gonna to try to pull in the chord, remembering that I'd like to still play a triad plus the 11. But if I can't do that, I'll play the 11, the one, and then drop the five. That's the first thing I would try to drop because the three is still important. If I can't do that, I will drop the three and see if I can get the one, five, and 11. So that's our strategy, okay. All right, so let's choose this A up top as our starting point, so that's gonna be our root. And so then I could say, okay, on this string, I have this one out here. So let me count that out. I'm gonna do my math thing. I think it's helpful. So we're gonna say that I need, it should be, a, so I'm looking at the 11. The 11 is equivalent to the fourth. And the fourth 
is going to be a six note away. It says diminished fifth, but it's going to be an augmented fourth. So six note away, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that makes sense. Could I reach that from here all the way up to uh, the 11? Probably not. Uh, that's quite a reach, but I could go like. That's a funky sound, right? So there's probably not much else I can do with that, but I could, I mean, you know, I could arpeggiate it from there. And I've been working on reaching out there because it does get you beyond the box. And just to note that there's some interesting, like, uh, fingering situations here, because now that I, now I have, if I reach four notes out, I don't care how they're spaced, I would kind of like to use one finger for each note and that'll give me a different pattern, right? If I was like right here, so in other words, if I was playing like, this is what I'm thinking right now, if I was playing like this A, B to this nine, notice they're spaced out this way, and, and so it's actually a span of one, two, three, four, five frets. So that's when I use this finger, the middle finger, I, I almost flipped off the camera. I use the middle finger and then, and then my pinky. <laughs> because it's a little bit easier for me to reach than using this ring finger because then I got to reach the pinky. If the if the th if it was right here, like it was a minor third, then I would use the ring because I can hammer on stronger. But if I have to reach out f to five, I use that one. And then if I have to reach out to, if I'm going to play four notes on a string, no matter how they're spaced, this one's too stretchy because it's a space in between each one, but I could still play, I'm trying to play each note with one finger right because i still think that's the fastest wait i've hit the wrong note right so i'm still trying to just so so just some fingering things if you do that i think you'll get to different rhythms uh, and you can play a little outside of the, the box that, that'll lead to different, I tend, anyway, that's, stop rambling. Uh, let's do the, <laughs> let's go to the next one for crying out loud. The next one's the one that we could see most clearly that you have what I would normally call as a flat fifth, right? Because here's my power chord where the E is. And then if I drop that down, flat fifth, that's why it's called here a diminished fifth same distance but we already have a five so it has to be an augmented fourth meaning it would be back here that would be the fourth that's been augmented up so the fourth has been shifted up that's the key so what can i do with that well i have uh, another i can't get my pick in my finger i have another uh third down here so i could pick that up Notice that's usually enough though, by the way, <laughs> like if you're playing, if you were playing like this A major, like a bar chord and you know, and you notice that you're on the four and you just throw in like a, like that, that's going to give you a lot of, it's going to give you a lot of tension. So you don't want to just throw it in willy nilly, even though it's in the key, but you could, but you could play with that, right? If I want to get just the third in, so I could just do that. If I want the third in there like this. So there's that. I also have the fifth here. So again, that's like my bar chord. I can pick up the fifth. I could do it this way if I wanted. I'm just barring off. But by doing that, I'm also getting the 13 because I'm barring, I'm barring this this one i'm getting the 13 by doing that but i could pull my a i could put my pinky on the a and alleviate that 13 getting another root all right movie b to the n uh what else do we got what do we got I've got, let's go down to the next one. So that would be 
I'm looking for a uh, six note away diminished uh, or augmented fifth, which is the same as a flat, I mean, an augmented fourth, which is the same, same as a flat fifth, which is also a, a 11. It's a flat 11, right? It's a, it's a, okay, it's an augmented 11. Let me get the terminology right. So an augmented 11 here, which is it, same as an augmented basically fourth. Okay. So, and that's going to have six notes between. So we have five, 10, nine, eight, seven, six. So it's going to go back to the one right there, the first fret on the D string. Uh, that's reachable. Okay, so what can I do with that? I've got a third right here. So we have the minor third or major third right there. That's interesting. And then I have a fifth, which I can't really reach at the same, well, the, I wouldn't be able to reach, it's on the same string, so I can reach that third. So that's an interesting voicing because what's interesting here is the fifth is right here. So I can play like, I can play like this. That would be a major, uh, an A major. And then I can reach back to get that minor. Or what am I saying minor? I get that augmented 11. Gives you more of a haunty kind of feel in there because it's giving you that dissonance. All right, so that's interesting. Uh, so if I pull, that's basically all I'm going to be able to do on that one. All right, let's go to the next one. If I go to this string, it's going to be, I'm looking for, once again, a six note away augmented 11, which is the same as a six note away augmented fourth, which actually has the same distance as a flat five, six notes away. So it'd be five, 10, 15. I can bring that back down by saying 15 minus 12 is five minus two, which is three and then three, four, five, six. So it'd be on the eight. So I have here, and I'm looking at the eight, five, six, seven, eight. Boom, boom. Okay. What can I do with that? Uh, let's see, so is that right? Yeah, that's interesting, okay. So I've got a five here. That's nice. So I could go, like what's happening, which is interesting, is I could go from this bar chord, which is the A major bar chord, going here and then here. So now I'm losing this one and I'm doing this. And then I can be like, all right, now I'm going to shift this finger up to here and see if I can still pick up the five this way. Five, six, seven. Five, six, seven, eight. All right, I'm on this string. do that I'm, I'm also revealing this G which I just want to mute I want to mute that G so I go. Interessante. So I've got that. I also have a three back here, which I might be able to go boom, boom, and still reach that eight. So 
once again I could kind of do that and then back to the third here. But that's a doubling up on the third. That's cool. we got let's go down to this one crossing the fault line here crossing the plate temp the plate tectonic plate shifted up we're going we're, we're looking for an uh a six note away uh augmented 11 which is equivalent to a six note away augmented fourth which is the same distance as a six note away diminished fifth six notes one two three or wait five ten fifteen 20 up to here. I could do it this way. 5, 10, 15. Let's bring it down. 15 minus 12 is 3. And then 3 plus 5 this way because of the plate tectonics gives me uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 7, 6. Six notes away. Okay, so we're going to say it's here. And then boom, right there. <laughs> So what can I do with that? I have a uh, I have a third here, so I could go boom boom like that. I'm lightly lightly barring, so I don't ring out those strings. So I could do that. Now, if I wanted to ring these out, I can pick up the 13, this would be the 9, and this would be the 7. That's an interesting voicing. So I could just bar this whole thing across. All right. Let's do the next one. Last, and it probably is the least. Last is not least. Well, sometimes it it could be. Doesn't mean because it's last, it doesn't, it's not the least. I'm just saying, that's not very helpful, that one. I can, that's not even right, I can't reach it. So I see it there, but, I, but not much I can do it. So we're gonna move to the next one, and we're gonna go to the D. I was the least on my, basketball team so then I moved into the last position in the line because I know that if you're last you can't be least if you're last you can't be least for crying out loud but then they're like no you, you're still the least it's like what that's not how the saying goes I okay let's try a joke here that wasn't the joke Maybe I'll write that down. That's got potential right there. I'll, do, I'll write that down. But here we go. This is the joke. This is my practice session joke. It's political because we're in political season here. So I have to I have to get with the times. So here we go. So if you don't like that, you could fast forward. Here, here we go. Got to go with the flow. Can't be hiding from the, from the flow just because people don't like it, yo. Because it's political. Okay, anyway. Let's see what we got. The new leftist political ad campaigns seem to be saying something like, sticks and stones can break bones, but the truth can really hurt me. So shut up before we have to pull out the sticks and stones. But don't worry, that's not a threat because we'll totally be mostly peaceful. We promise. How could you be sure? Because we'll tell you we're mostly peaceful. And we don't just reflect the, no, the news as, as the mainstream of sewage media. We, we shape and mold through our word, our very breath, the, the reality for crying out loud. Ha ha ha. And it's like, well, wait a sec. Oh, yeah. Well, the truth, the truth is in the pudding, man. The truth is in the pudding, which is why the mainstream of sewage media had a had a pudding eating contest right so they forcing us who actually want the truth 
to have to now go sifting through the media crap. You know, it's crazy. Like, I wish the truth was still in the pudding. I wish the truth was still in the pudding. Now the truth is in the media crap. Dang mainstream of sewage media forcing us to sift through their crap for the truth. I mean, talk about dragging us down to their level. Oh, looky here. In a pile of mainstream media crap, it's Hunter Biden's laptop. Imagine finding that here. What are the odds for crying out loud? Uh, the, the mainstream of media is telling us to leave the laptop in the forgotten media crap pile. Why? So as, so as not to be burdened by what has been. Like what? Not, don't be burdened, not to be burdened. That's ridiculous. Yeah, but may, may, maybe someone needs to be burdened by what has been, dang it. May, maybe due to what has been, someone needs to be fired. That's what I'm thinking. Someone needs, someone needs to be fired for what has been here for crying out loud. Maybe if we, all right, we're moving on to the D down here. So I'm on the D looking at the relative position. So let's go above it this time. If we go above that one, then I need to take a look at the inverse. So I'm looking at the 11, which is an augmented 11, six note away augmented 11, which is the same as a six note away augmented fourth, which is the same distance as a six note away diminished fifth. And so the inverse of that would be 12 uh, minus six, which would also be six, which is the funny thing. This is also the weird interval that flat fifth or augmented fourth or augmented 11, however you want to call it, is right in the middle of the intervals. So the inverse of it is the same, six and six, which is weird. So let's go here. So we're going to say then I just have to count up six. So I'd be saying five. I'm going to call it negative five. Uh, wait a sec. Five, uh, six, seven, eight. Uh, that, no, because that's the wrong <laughs> one. Get your head in the game. So it's going to be five, six right there. Boom. All right. So if I'm on this one, so if I go from top to bottom, I get a, a you might call it a flat fifth. That This distance right here should be, we're going to say, oh, that's a flat fifth or an augmented fourth. That's the dissonancy sound, like the diminishy sound. And uh, unless it's on the kink and the tuning over the fault line. But if I go to the bottom to the top, it's still a six note away, flat fifth or augmented fourth. So weird, either way. It's the inverse of itself, man. It's like the inverse of itself. That's deep, I don't know what that means. It sounds like a contradiction. It sounds like some kind of crazy stuff. All right, so it's three and one or, okay. Uh, what else do we have here? Let's go to like, here we got a third so then if i grab that third in so now we get this diminishy sounding which which is the augmented 11 the one and then the three all right and then i could grab the fifth over here instead so i could like bar bar that and grab the fifth Right there. Or I could try to grab it this way if I want it. But it's probably barring it's probably the way to go. Although you get a little less. And I could might as well grab the the D underneath that while I do that. Wait a second, hold on, that's not right. Sorry about that. What are you doing? Oh my goodness. There we go. There it is. All right, uh, let's call that good. Let's go down to the next one. Let's go on the same string. I'm just gonna go six strings up to get the augmented 11, which is the same distance as the augmented four, six notes away. So it would just be, of course, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it would be up here all the way at the 11. So again, if I was to finger that, that's gonna be like four, it's four, four notes within that span. So I've been practicing trying to stretch that and I'm saying, okay, well, what if I'm gonna stretch up there? Do I wanna break it out into like a three and a three that I play or do I wanna play each of those notes 
with one finger. And I think that's actually the best way to do it. If I can visualize where the notes are, it's like here, every other note. And then I'm just gonna play each one of those with each finger. So I think that's faster than trying to break it into three and three or something like that. Although you can play, it, you can play with different fingerings on that because again, if it was like, if I was just playing like from here to the, I would do this finger. I've been practicing that finger now, but if it was a flat third, I would do this finger. And then if I'm going all the way out for, for I'm gonna play four notes, then even if I have to let go of this, I'd like to be able to not let go of where my pointer is, but if I have to, then I can just go all fingers, pinky, ring, middle, and then pointer. So I'm not sure that's the best way. I think I'm not an expert on like the most art ergonomically proper in think finger. I should look into that more. But from my testing, that's what I'm doing right now, <laughs> in case you want to know. Uh, so then I'm going to say, let's go down here and say this is going to be on the string below it. Again, this is where it looks to me. If I saw that just on itself, I'd be like, oh, that's a flat fifth, because there's the fifth. But really, I'm thinking it's an augmented fourth, which would be this. So the fourth would be underneath, same distance between the two of them. Fourth would be here, fifth would be here, augmented fourth, taking the fourth up, flat fifth, taking the fifth down. Why do we call it an augmented fourth instead of a flat fifth, even though I named it incorrectly here because my worksheet pulled in the flat fifth when it should be an augmented fourth because we need a fourth in the scale. That's what we're missing. So we're going to call it an augmented fourth, but it's the same as a flat fifth. And it's going to be six notes away because there's five here and then six. Boom. There's that tensiony sound. That's the easy, that's the first note I'd probably say like where that is. So if I was playing like a D major, which would be my uh, A shaped bar chord like this, where you're playing like boom, boom, boom. Then you can throw in, again, if you know that you're, you're playing in the key of like C major and you're on the fourth, which is like the Lydian, then you could be like and then pull in that augmented fourth. So what I'm doing there is I'm just taking my bar and moving it down and still getting another one and a third so I can reveal the fourth and grab the fourth. So here's my bar. And then I'm just pushing the bar down and grabbing that four, which is a little wonky. To so it might be easier to play it like this instead of a bar. So here's my bar. We'll just play these two strings. I don't know. Interesting. So there's my third. So I was playing the third down here. And then I could play like, I could like play the A on top, which is like a fifth. So here's the, so I could be boom, boom, boom. Maybe I try to, I'm trying to lightly bar to, to not play anything below that. heavier top end on it and then I could play like I could be like do the fifth back here so like if I was on the D the fifth would normally be there because there's my D major one three five so there's the five could I grab that five and the I could wait a second That's doable. Although I, I'd like to mute this string. I could. So I haven't played it that way much. But that's doable. That's doable. All right. So then I can go here, here, 
It could go like here, here, and here with the A down there. And then maybe even grab that third on the seven. That's interesting, I haven't done that. Well, that's just the same, that's the same thing. So I was doing with the bar. All right, moving on. Moving on. That's enough of that. I'm getting sick and tired of your... So let's go. We're looking for a six note away augmented 11, which is the same as a six note away augmented fourth, same distance as a five note away uh, flat, a six note away flat fifth. So it'd be five... 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, reaching back to that uh, 1 over here. So if I was on this D, I'm reaching back to the 1 on the G string. That's doable. And again, that's kind of cool to know. I haven't been playing with myself with that, but I know that, that this is my lean back major, my lean back major D. So that'd be the one, the one, three, five. And then if I just scoot this back, so I get the normal one, three, five, and then shift the, the five back to a flat five or diminished uh, or augmented fourth, whatever you want to call it, or augmented 11. I wish I can, I can mute this string. Let's just continue on here. So now we're on this one. So now I'm going to say, so that's going to be a, what am I calling this? A six note away augmented 11, which is the same as a six note away augmented fourth, which is the same distance as a six note away diminished five, six notes, one, five, 10. And then because of the kink in the tuning 15, I can bring it back down. 15 minus 12 is a uh, three. And then three, four, five, six. So that would be six notes away. That's on the nine. So on the nine here, G string. All right, what else could I do with that? I could be like, boom, there's another root, which I already really have. I'd want the fifth here, so I could do that. There's a third right there, so that's doable. Well, well, the third, I can't play it at the same time, but I could go arpeggiating. So if, wait a second, hold on a second. I need, I'm totally whacked out. There's the note I'm looking for. This is not the note you're looking for. And then there's the D, and then there's the fifth. That's even more doable. And then I could go, so this would be, once again, my bar shape for a D major, which maybe I can convert then, pulling that fifth and then grabbing that nine. So I might play it like this way. Okay, and then uh, I've got a another uh, uh, fifth here. Let's just move. Let's just move down to the last one. Okay, so then I've got the one down here. So that would be the same as I found this one up here. So this is on the same because they're both E strings. So this would be the D, and then I have this down here, or it's back one right there so I could I have the third right behind it I'm trying to get my pick in my hand 
So I could go boom, boom, boom. Muting these two. So the root, the third, mute, mute, and then uh, the diminished 11. All right. I think I have to stop here. So I should I should go one more string down. But tomorrow, hopefully, I'll pick it up around here. And then we'll keep on going on the second half with this. Uh, I was messing around yesterday with just rhythm again. Just... kind of ha hammering on this seven before where we did the seven the other day but now I'm doing the a minor which also has a flat seven on the a minor and then I'm just I just keep on leaning on that seven which is the same distance we talked about yesterday with the major but I'm looking at a minor so that's gonna be the G here, there's an open G here, there's a G here, so I was doing like